coming back to medieval India and your entire study of the agrarian system of, under the Mughals. So, can you tell us a little bit about what India was like as a historian in that period? And obviously there was a big India, so you have a, what is north and northwest, even beyond India's borders today. You have east, you have west and you have the south. Uh, well, of course, we should recognize that these, um, the, uh, that states at that time and societies at that time, not welfare states or egalitarian societies, they were exploitative uh, in, uh, states, uh, which took Feudal. a large amount of tax Feudal, yeah. from the peasants. And then there were intermediary classes like zamidars who also took their shares. Uh, this was through, throughout the world, well, India yeah. is not an exception. Um, there was a writer Bhim Sen, who going to, this, to South India made a great discovery. And that discovery uh, was very interesting because Karl Marx would have been greatly interested in it. He thought that the better the climate, uh, the greater the fertility of land, the greater the poverty. Greater the poverty. poverty, because one could live in a very small amount. And so, the great temples of South India, he said, were built uh, because the surplus produced was such a large, such a large amount. This is Bhim Sen, an officer, an official of the Mughal government, uh, who went to with the Mughal armies to South India. Um, so, this is one thing. This is true of the Mughal Empire also. Of course, the uh, fertility might not have been as much as in part of South India, but the whole of India and Bengal particularly was fertile, so the surplus was uh, quite large. But at the same time, there are things to be set for its culture. And for, uh, despite um, communal violence at various on various occasions and also some uh, communal discrimination which existed there was a lot of coexistence and uh, the development of composite culture and when foreigners came here they did not see muslims oppressing hindus they were generally surprised at uh, the religious multiplicity without any trouble in India, how everyone had adjusted itself. Even in Aurangzeb's time, foreigners thought that in India, every religion was tolerated. So, that's particularly a tradition we should uh, remember. And there were, what I have found more interesting was how, in particularly in the Mughal period, explanations were sought for this coexistence, like, like, the statement that since God does not discriminate between Hindus and Muslims when the sun shines or the rain falls, then why the king as his representative should distinguish? This is even mentioned for his own purposes by Aurangzeb. Okay. But this is an official doctrine from the time of Akbar. <laughs> the other one in Akbar that uh, since the world and mm, world is an illusion, religion is also an illusion. And so you should tolerate everything. But you should particularly support reason. And that argument of Abul Fadl, I think, although developed out of a Sufic idea of the world as illusion, Ibn Arabi, uh, in, but that introduction of reason as a thing which must be supported, although that too, too is supposedly illusion. I think all these are interesting and important uh, intellectual attempts to explain a situation on the ground. 